Hello, folks. My name is Jay Amerlinson, and I'm a Transformation Engineering Lead here at Software AG. And today, we're continuing our series of ARIS videos, talking about some features and functionality of the toolset, and helping you to get oriented with the possibilities with Software AG and with ARIS. And today, we're talking about simulation. What is simulation? Well, there's an opportunity for you to take the processes you've already built, add some attributes that you might have captured through uh, discovery activities or time studies and help to understand how your process might perform in real life um, if it were to be executed the way you've designed it. Now, how do I do that? Well, let's talk first about moving from ARIS Connect over to our ARIS Architect tool because that's where you're going to have to go to run your simulations. Now, in ARIS Architect, I'm going to open up a very simple process for step to start and end. And now I'm gonna to have to allocate some of my key attributes to this process to help better dis display and explain how these steps are going to perform. First, I'm gonna add times. My times are gonna go on each of these steps. And so you see here, I have my average processing time. Now, as a note for you, you don't have to use averages. And here I'm gonna choose one hour um, but I could choose any number of different types of measurements. Um, or I could choose to add a different uh, attribute that talks about a little bit more about the specifics. Um, and so if I wanted to uh, create a little bit more of a minimum and maximum time, I could choose to do that. Um, I can also use different types of, uh, of functions. So a perfect example of that is I could choose a constant or equal normal log normal distribution for any of these particular things. And, and so I could create a more statistically relevant thing, but for today, I'm gonna to give you just a basic simulation where we talk about average time and go from there. Now, I'm gonna add that to each of my steps. I have got, I've got an hour over here, 90 minutes on validating data, 15 minutes to run the procedure, and I've got 30 minutes to generate a report. That's gonna be the start of our simulation. Now the next piece of the puzzle is I'd like to, to do uh, this a certain number of times a day, week, month, however I'd like. So at the start event, I'm gonna add some frequency. Now you see I've added frequency daily, but I could add any number of frequencies depending on how I'd like to measure this weekly, monthly, or annually. We'll talk about in a subsequent video how you can get more detailed on how processes are kicked off, but for now we're just going to start with a, with a daily frequency of 10. And lastly, I'm going to be using a certain person to do to these steps. This is obviously a very basic process. I'm going to be using this reporting analyst. I'm going to give them a cost rate for busy and, and idle time, as well as a number of employees. Now, you don't have to necessarily give them a cost rate for idle time. For instance, if they're not working, they could be off schedule, which we'll talk about later um, uh, in, a, in a subsequent video. Um, but in, in this example, I'm having somebody who's on call for some of the time. When they're working, they charge a certain amount. When they're not working, they charge a different amount not to work. Uh, and the most, the most importantly is number of employees. Now this is gonna be, a, once again, a basic simulation example, but this will give you some example of, uh, or some idea of how the simulation engine works. Now, once I've got these, these statistics, that's my time and my number of activations and the resources that I use. Well, that's all I need. Then I'm gonna go to evaluate and start simulation. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to open up my simulation model inside ARIS Architect. So once again, I'm not changing platforms. Everything is within ARIS Architect the same way you saw it before. But instead, I'm sort of gonna flip the script. Instead of looking at this from the perspective of a, a process I can model, I'm looking at the, this from a perspective of a process I can run test instances of. So what is it going to, what is reporting, uh, sorry, is what is simulation actually going to do? So simulation is actually going to create what we call process folders, as in executions of the process as designed in a test format. Now there's no data associated with that, it's simply just running and, and triggering a certain number of times and then following through. But when I hit start, you see it's going to start animating. Now you're going to get some information on this. You've got our in, your ingest data, validate data, run procedure, generate report, and you're starting to see some information on this person on the right side. You're seeing that there's a degree of activation, so there's 73%, so that, that's the utilization of the person that's in, involved. And the number of activities they've, they've processed, or number of times that they've processed an activity, you have 200 now. On the bottom, you're seeing some, some information about how much of the simulation we've gone through. So the simulation setting is, settings are currently that we're gonna be simulating for the next 100 days. 
Um, so we're going to be simulating starting now for 100 days. You can, of course, adjust that, that time period. You can adjust also the models included, so you can include more than one model in the simulation process. In fact, that's how you might simulate an end-to-end. -end. Um, and I can choose how it's animated and what statistics will pop out about that simulation. Now, as I'm simulating my process, I'm just going to turn off animation for a moment. On the right side, it's going to pop open a couple of different interesting things I can use. Um, a perfect example of that is I can open up statistics on how the simulation is performing um, and what is what's happening with my different stakeholders, whether or not they're you know, being utilized to the fullest extent or whether or not they're being underutilized or, or, or you're having to come in on evenings or weekends and charge overtime. So lots of information I can get out about that. Let's take a look at some of the activities that are happening. So we have four steps in this process, and we get a bunch of different fields that will pop open here. Uh, the number of process folders uh, processed, uh, received and processed, and then over here we start to see some time information. Um, that time information is perhaps the most important for what we're talking about today. Um, that time information includes dynamic wait time, static wait time, orientation time and processing time. Each of those four represent four different types of time we could capture about a process at a very basic level. Our, our processing time being how long do we spend within each step running this process. Our orientation time is how much time do we spend getting our process set up. Now orientation time is, is gonna happen at the start of each work day or the start of each, or start of each or, uh, simulation period. And that's something that you have to set up as a thing. That's more, it's more of an advanced simulation concept. Static wait time is, think of it like paint to dry. Or orientation time is kind of like, how much does it take to change the tool bit to the right tool bit? And you only have to do that once for all the operations it does subsequently. Static wait time is like, you have to wait for paint to dry. So between two steps, you're always gonna have to wait two hours before you can proceed on the next one. And then dynamic wait time, well, that's perhaps the most powerful of all. That is how long is each step waiting for a resource to be available, as in how much is it bottlenecking? Um, so I can see, oh, wait, let me sort my processing time and see what are my needy or my greedy process steps. So clearly we're spending the most time in validating data. We should probably improve our process to, to figure that out, and I'll do that in a subsequent video. And then we have our dynamic wait time sum, as in which of my process steps are bottlenecking the most, and where can I figure out the best way to do things. Let's actually generate a column chart here as well. So ingesting data is actually where we're, we're causing the most amount of bottleneck. Now you might, I mean, that, that's sort of expected since we've got uh, a lot of things happening right at the beginning. So, you know, the ingesting data is our first step. And if people are, if their resources are caught in later steps, well, there's nothing they can do. They can't go back and start the process again. Um, so very powerful to be able to see those sorts of things. Now that's just on the process side. Let's talk about the resources at a very high level. So we've got our human resources, this one reporting analyst. How much time are they spending doing this? I've allowed them to have overtime, so they've actually been overutilized. Um, and I could even take, take a look at how much that costs. So they've cost you know, $240,000 in busy time costs and about $3,000 in idle time. These guys are not idle ever. Um, and those costs are allocated to our activities. So we can take a look at our activity costs total, so how much are our human resource costs per activity, and you'll see a bunch of other different types of costs. When we get to more advanced simulation, we can see total costs, material costs, personnel costs, operating costs, energy costs. There's lots of different types of costs you can allocate to a given step um, or to, a, to any, any of your resources. And so it's very powerful for being able to understand where those costs are coming from in the proposed pro process you've got designed. And that's how we bring everything together. Now, this is just an example. I can take all these statistics and I can choose to export them, um, all these to Excel, or something that's even cooler, which we'll use in the subsequent uh, video, is that all of these simulation results are actually stored. So if I go back to my reporting as is model, you'll see some interesting information. What are these grayed out attributes? But they have values in them. That's because these attributes are actually populated by the results of our simulation that we just ran. And so every time I run a simulation, I overwrite all these attributes with the latest simulation run and how, those, how the, the simulation went. And that's gonna be very useful for analysis and reporting later on. So here's your very basic simulation. Something that's fast, something that's easy, something that helps you understand how your process might perform if implemented the way that it was designed um, and gives you a pathway to help to do cost-benefit analysis for transformation, which we'll talk about 
in a subsequent video. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. Once again, my name is J.M. Erlinson. I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG, and I'm excited to present all of the information you might need on ARIS.